Thank you. I'd like to thank the NAS committee for the opportunity to present uh, these data. These are our disclosures. <clears throat> Lateral lumbar interbody fusion is a relatively new technique uh, with a reported neurological incidence uh, iatrogenically during surgery as high as 30 to 40 percent. Cadaveric uh, descriptions of, quote, safe zones for lateral lumbar interbody fusion have been described. And it's generally accepted that there's some anterior migration of the lumbar uh, plexus uh, as one travels from cranial to caudal, uh, with the safe zone at the L4, L5 disc narrowed relative uh, to the uh, cranial segments. The present study uh, was a collaboration uh, with the neuroradiologists of our department to uh, apply a technique called neurography, which has been well described for applications in peripheral nerves. Indirect localization of the lumbar plexus has been described. Uh, Kepler in 2011 reported the anterior border of the psoas as a marker, uh, in addition to a perineural fat stripe. Uh, Voyaziz in 2014 described a uh, rising psoas sign, or the shape of the psoas, or morphology, thought to be related to the position of the lumbar plexus at these segments. However, direct visualization is uh, possible. MR neurography is a relatively new technique. It uh, relies on high-strength magnets with specialized imaging uh, protocols designed to Im dramatically improve uh, tissue discrimination. Additionally, these specialized sequences allow for imaging in multiple di dimensions, which allows the ability to trace small nerve calibers along uh, their course. Uh, this study was to serve as a proof of concept of this technology uh, in relation to the L4, L5 disc to study the surgical corridor for XLIF or lateral lumbar antibody fusion uh, procedures. Uh, this is an example of the acquisition data or the coronal uh, 3D T2 space uh, sequence demonstrating the L4, uh, L5, and S1 neuroanatomy in relation to the L4, L5 disc space. Using specialized software, we were able to fuse the 3D uh, T2 data with axial T1 data for more anatomic detail. You can clearly delineate the relevant uh, neuroanatomy in relation in the intrasoas uh, muscle in relation to the disc. With our initial study of approximately 30 uh, neurograms, we created uh, models and graded the location of the uh, segments by Moreau's uh, classification by zone 1, 2, 3, and 4. While not powered to show significance, the results of this small series agree with the previous cadaveric data uh, with a relatively anterior position uh, of the plexus in zones three and four, uh, with a higher degree of variability on the right. Uh, in this series, there appeared to be uh, quite a bit of left-right asymmetry. Uh, as a couple of representative images, the case on the left, uh, <coughs> surgeons were blinded to uh, grade based on Morrow's uh, determination, the location of the nerve roots, uh, when unable to accurately do so. However, uh, on neurography study, you see the uh, exiting nerve root in zone three on the right uh, and zone four on the left, making zone three a more uh, desirable approach. Uh, the patient on the right has an L5 hemivertebra uh, with very uh, poor imaging based on conventional MRI sequences. However, uh, with a neurogram, you can see the neuroanatomy in zone three and even into zone two on the patient's left. Uh, these are the 3D models that can be uh, generated with software uh, based on the neurogram sequences showing the relation of the neuroanatomy uh, throughout the uh, lumbar uh, region. Uh, in summary, risk of iatrogenic lumbar plexus injury is fairly common during uh, retroperitoneal minim minimally invasive approaches. A direct visualization of the lumbar plexus is not possible uh, to any high uh, degree of accuracy with standard conventional MRI. However, MR neurography is a non-invasive method with conventional MRI techniques and post-processing with software that can more accurately predict the location of the lumbar plexus for pre-surgical planning. Thank you. Thank you. The next paper Standing posture and sagittal balance during walking in adult spinal deformity patients is presented by Dr. Hideyuki Arima.